Hey guys, got a video update on the Firebird. Right now I'm gonna show you my test engine with the Firebird engine harness. So my plan is, this is a front mount harness. See the ECU connectors down here. This is gonna mount to the firewall, not the firewall, the core support. The ECU, I'll bolt to the core support, connect these up. Um, pretty, pretty easy. So this, this harness has pretty much everything um, I can think of. So we got your fuel pressure control module for the PWM fuel system. Um, this is the power output for a separate harness. Um, it's like, this is a fuel pump harness. It's going to have four wires. It's going to have your fuel pump, uh, power and ground, and your fuel level. So I'll make that custom link to the Firebird. Um, we have an emissions harness. So you see some of these wires are being used to go to the fuel pressure control module. This is going to control a vent valve and a fuel tank pressure sensor. This is going to be basically uh, an emissions legal build for here in Las Vegas. So it has to have a functioning EVAP system. And also it will have catalytic converters. So we have all 402s. Get your upstream, downstream, which these plug into the cat on both sides here. And that pretty much makes it emissions legal. You put cats in it, have a functioning EVAP system with 402s, you're good to go for most states, except for California. California is its own special entity. Uh, next, we'll go over the rest of the harness. It's pretty simple. Um, this is a brand new um, GM harness that I take apart and rebuild. It grabs power from the alternator. I'm running a 10 gauge wire and it makes its way to the fuse panel. And this has pretty much all the goodies I can think of. It's gonna have basically like a one touch start system. So this has a relay for your starter and that'll get wired up to the muscle car module. So basically you just tap the button and it'll auto start itself. Um, has the AC relay in it. It's going to do your your uh, AC compressor. It's going to control it through the Gen 5 ECM. Um, part of that deal is you have to run an AC pressure sensor. So here's the wiring for that. You got uh, your clutch and your variable valve in the back. Uh, this harness, I changed a few things up. Put the mass airflow on the driver's side. And I also ran the throttle body wiring underneath, just in case I decided to put a supercharger on it later. Because of the supercharger, this gets rotated, your throttle body. So I wanted all the wiring to come out this end. So it's better to be too long than too short. So we'll do that. This is part of your emissions. This is your purge purge valve. So this is how it basically allows your fuel tank to breathe by releasing uh, va the, the vapors, the gas, you know, from inside your engine. And it keeps it all contained. So you're not um, having fumes outside your car. This is all internally regulated. So a lot of guys ask me, hey, where's my connector for this? Well, I delete this because 99% of builds aren't running full emissions. The only reason you run this is if you're doing an evaporative uh, system, which is not just this valve. It's your fuel tank, your fuel cap, it's your vent valve, it's your fuel tank pressure sensor, and it's your charcoal canister. So there's a whole system that's involved. So this usually gets deleted. Uh, map sensor, you know, that's there. It's long in case I have to go back here for the supercharger. Or if I run a different intake, um, like an LT1 style, just made it, you know, where I can adjust it. This is a test, a test car. Um, you see the main main trunk here. Um, it will go down in here away, so it, it won't really be too visible. 
And then you got the main trunk here, which that looks real nice. And then the rest of it goes down low. And this way it's really easy to mount your system. You can mount your harness in about 15 minutes, get everything plugged, plugged in. Now, this is another part that I, this is the way I do it. Um, usually I use a 12 pin connector. This is a 20 pin connector because I have a lot more going on for this build. So this is going into the inside of your car. Really the only wire you have to hook up on the inside are these two wires. Pink is your ignition turn on circuit. So this lights up this fuse panel. It makes the engine come to life with ignition on. So you got that one. And then the brake wire hooks to your brake switch for 12 volts brake supply. That way your TCM knows when you're hitting the brake and it unlocks the torque converter. Next, you got your pedal connection. Um, OBD2, usually I have a, a light with this, but I'm running a 2018 Camaro cluster. So the SCS service engine soon um, wire goes directly to the cluster and that will turn the check engine light on at the cluster. Um, and this is a, a ground, it goes on the inside. This is just some, some of my extra goodies I, I've never really done before, but uh, we got sport mode. So my 2018 console has a sport mode button built into it. Um, this wiring will, will enable me to change sport modes. Um, we also have a tack wire, um, which is really just for the Camaro gauges. For some reason, Camaro and Corvette gauges get a tack wire off the engine. And the tack wire is actually a replicated cam signal. They call it a replicated crank signal, but it's not. It's, it's a cam signal, actually. So um, I got all that planned out. You know, the controllers, this is pretty easy, easy to mount. You got three grounds to hook up. You get your, this is for an eight speed. So here's your transmission. This will go back and I'll hide it in the back corner by the booster. Here's the TCM connector, eight speed. And see, it's, uh, I was gonna compare it to a 10 speed. Do I have one right here? Yeah. Ten speed. Try to get a good look at it. And this is an eight speed. So they're definitely different connections there. And the ten speed has a three extra wires that go to the ECU. Let's see, this is a three wire fuel fuel rail sensor. Uh, my system, kind of going back and forth. Um, I have the harness set up as a 14 and 16, but I can easily swap wires around and make it uh, a 17 and up. I'll see what the transmission allows me to do. On a 17 transmission, you can use uh, a 14 to 16 controllers, which saves me like 500 bucks in programming fees. So that's kind of the reason I, I do that. But if you're running an 18 transmission, you have to run a TD7A. And well, anyways, this is the, the harness kind of blabbing on here. So this will go on shortly so we can get the car fired up this week. And then this is the brand new fuel tank set up. So I got the connection set up that'll go to that fuel connector. This is your fuel pump output directly to your engine. I just gotta make a cap, make a cap today for that. So I can bring everything over to the shop, get ready. The test fire, I'm not gonna put this tank in. Um, I'm just short on time, so we're just gonna throw the harness on. Start it with the LS style fuel system, regulated at 57 PSI. This will still work. You just use the power output and it will it'll still turn on the pump. Anyways, here's uh, another update on the build. Thanks for watching.